Hey guys, this is my earthquake coffee table. It's very effective at storing blankets and keeping them hidden. This is my newborn son. He's very effective at making poop. Gross. One of these two things is going to get destroyed and remade. Cast your vote down below now for which one it should be. All right, the votes are in. You guys voted unanimously. The baby's got to go. Okay, that's enough messing around. We're not gonna kill the baby. He's pretty cool beans. However, this coffee table, which is about 10 years old, it's time to die. But I wanna keep and reuse the innards of this coffee table, which is still gonna be quite good at storing blankets and other goodies. This top shell, which the earthquake crack in the top, is really good at crushing little fingers. So we wanna get away from this and go to a better design, which incorporates two of these fold up and out lifters, which turns it into like a lift up and out coffee table, which allows you to do puzzles on it or eat off of it, whatever you wanna do. It's just a little more handy of a solution and it's still gonna leave us with our blanket storage in the bottom. So let's go ahead, remove the old drawer slides and chuck these two top sections and we'll get started reusing the base and make a new top for it. So after racking my brains for a total of five minutes, I've decided this is the direction I'm going to go. This is a three quarter inch piece of oak veneer plywood, which is left over from my computer desk build video. If you haven't seen that, go watch it, link in the description or a card. I don't know, maybe I'll forget to do this. Anyways, this is a leftover piece of plywood. As you can see, it's almost the right width and it's pretty long. So a little bit at the end is going to get snipped off. But because of the width of this, it overhangs by about a quarter inch. And I'm thinking that's gonna really allow me to get my fingers underneath it and lift it up when I go to use the mechanism. So I'm gonna leave it at that width and I'm gonna cut it to length with that same quarter inch overhang. But then I'm also gonna take some of this real wood red oak edge banding and glue this on around all the edges. And that'll add another eighth inch of grabability to each side. And this will also allow me to put a very small eighth inch round over on this, which I wouldn't be able to do if I did the iron on edge banding. So that little bit of soft edge I'm hoping will save baby's melons from getting all cut up. So that's the direction we're gonna go with this. Let's get to it. So while the wood filler dries on the tabletop, right here we've got the bottom of the table and it has all these holes from the old drawer slide and this MDF bottom, it's MDF because no one was ever going to see it, this has this awful edge here, this needs to be filled in, everything needs probably uh, two or three coats of this drywall spackle 
and sanded flush before I can go ahead and paint all this the new color. So let's start spackling. So a few coats of white paint on this bad boy and four coats of satin water-based polyurethane on the top and we're ready for final assembly, which basically means just installing these bad boys. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and measured out where everything needs to get mounted and I've determined I need this spacer here and this spacer here with the most adorable little clamp of all time holding it right in place like that. And then this guy, can just simply get lined up against the two, except it kind of smacks like that. Maybe I'll lower that. Okay, get this guy in here, and simple as that. That's where it needs to go. So I'll go ahead and drill these pilot holes and mount this guy. And what that'll do is when this folds up, which it's under a little bit of spring pressure because of this air piston here, is that centers this perfectly right here, so I can easily draw out my markings on the top and mount this to the top and that'll make everything a lot easier. So let's get this mounted. So there's a little half inch countersink Phillips head screws that came with these brackets, which is nice. But these ones over here at the front, they're way bigger slots. So I had to go ahead and use my own, I think these are five eighths inch, huge number three Robertson button head screws. And these will cover that area so I don't need to use a washer. Nice big head on these. I'll go ahead and remove these spacers, switch over to my number three Robertson. So now you guys might be saying to yourself, well, why did he use the self-centering bit in the impact and the driver in the drill? And the reason is simply because I can adjust the torque settings on this guy. I know number 13 or so will give me a really nice tight screw joint without having to use a screwdriver and without stripping out that hole. So I really like using the clutch on these so I don't blow out the holes or kill the threads. And this guy, it doesn't really matter. This could be another drill, but this simply has the quick connect quarter inch shank. So I like using it with that. So let's go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side. So now to attach the top to these brackets, what I've done is I've made this spacer piece, which is going to correctly position the top away from this bracket like this. So the top will sit here and it'll push it away this far, which is about three inches because the distance from this edge to this edge is two and a half plus the half inch of overhang. Don't worry about it, I calculate it all out. And then the front to back distance, the edge of the desk should be here to here and that should center it totally. So when I go to close it, the desk top is totally centered. Let's go ahead and put these spacers in place and get these screwed on. So I figured it out. I cut this in half, spacer on the front, spacer on the back, good to go. 
God, the shock's in the way. Okay, let's give this thing a test run. That works pretty well. Now, as you might've noticed, it kind of slammed down just a little bit. So what I did was I picked up a pack of these soft close cabinet closers and they're kind of adjustable on how deep they go. That's it, you can't really adjust how much pressure it takes, which does worry me because this might take a little more pressure to close this than this is capable of producing downforce on. But we'll see, I'm gonna go ahead and start with installing two in the back because I noticed the back comes in contact first before the front. And if I need to add more to the front, I've got eight of these. So let's just start off with two in the back and see what happens. It's got this little lip at rest against and I'm just gonna drive her home. All right, let's give it a shot, see if it's any better. So it's still slammed in the front and I think what I'm gonna do is create a triangle and have the three points of contact. I think that'll stop the corners from slamming altogether. Hopefully, if not, I'll have to move this one in the middle to two in the corners, but I'm afraid of too much upwards pressure from these guys as is even adding this one. So I really don't wanna add the two in the corner. So hopefully this one solves the problem and we're all good. And in case you're wondering, the reason I really want these instead of just letting it slam on a few pieces of felt or something is because I don't want my kid's fingers getting smushed. And this gives them lots of time to get their hands out of the way. So let's try this guy. All right, let's give it a shot. See, does this stay closed? Well, the good news is it stays closed. So I guess when you go to close it, the next uh, time you put your uh, coffee on it, it'll auto level. But I'm gonna call that good. So the last thing I am going to do is add a little felt sticky bumper on each corner and one in the middle here, just for good measure. Maybe it's overkill, maybe it's Maybelline. Who knows, this is what I'm doing. Okay, we got the felts, we got the three pads. Let's give her a test run. That seems sturdy enough to hold a puzzle or a TV dinner. Let's close her up. Perfect. And with that, this project's complete.